Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to do a continuation of the last video where we were creating an, an app for finance and operations using the Power Apps, right? So, so basically I had a customer requirement uh, recently where the customer needed to be able to track a purchase order uh, across the ocean. So they order goods from China and those goods get put on an, a ship and that ship goes across the ocean to the U.S., right? So they just needed a way as the uh, shipper is telling them where that ship is at to be able to tell where that shipment's at on the ocean, if it's at the port, if, you know, what port it's at, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so pretty simple app. Now we did do this app using custom programming, what we would normally do, but I wanted to see if we could do this same thing with a power app, okay? So in the last video, what we did was we took and created the custom entity that we're gonna need for this power app. Um, to hold the data. So this week what we're going to do is we're going to build the basic structure of the app and in the next following videos we'll, we'll continue to add uh, some functionality to this app until we're complete. Okay? So what we're going to do first is let's go ahead and go over and do uh, make.powerapps.com and I'm going to go ahead and create a new app and we're just going to do one for blank and I'm going to call this one purchase order tracking. I'm going to do the format as a tablet. It's really not going to matter what format you're using here. The phone's going to be smaller format. Tablet's going to be a bigger format on the screen. Either one will work for you. I'm going to use, go ahead and use tablet. Then we'll go ahead and hit the create there. All right, so we've got our basic layout for our tablet. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a header up there. So I'm going to hit this plus here. And we'll do a rectangle. I'm going to drag that up and drag that across. We just have a nice little header. And we're going to go ahead and insert. And we'll go ahead and do a label up here. Um, and then we're going to call this same thing as our apps so purchase order tracking. All right. And I'm going to make that uh, size 20. I'll make that size 24. And we'll make the color of that white so it stands out. And then let's slide this across and make this a little bit bigger so we can see all the words there. Okay. So this kind of creates a, a nice little header for us. Now the other thing I want to do before I move on is I showed you in a video a couple weeks ago, I'll, I'll link it up here now, is when we attach this into finance and operations, there's going to be some a variable that we need to get from finance and operations. It's basically going to pass the purchase order number to us. I'm going to go ahead and add that statement in here for us now. So where I'm going to do that at it is I'm going to click on the app here. So I'm going to go to this little here, I'm going to click on the actual app, and then we're going to go to advanced. And then on start, what I want it to do is I want it to look for and grab an ID from finance and operations. Oop, put it in the wrong box there. Clear that out. And then the on start there, I'm going to paste that in there. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to send us a, uh, an ID, which in, the, in our case is going to be the purchase order number. We're going to store that in a value called uh, FinOps input. Okay. So that's what we're doing there. We're just going to, in the app, on load, it's going to grab a variable FinOps input, which is going to be our purchase order number. Okay? Uh, all right, so the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to add a gallery view here to view our actual data. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm still on the insert. I'm going to go to the gallery, and I'm just going to insert a vertical gallery here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of move this around to, to it looks nice. I'm gonna put a header up here, so I'm gonna leave a little space at the top. And we'll slide this over. And what we need to do here is we need to give it um, a data source. So I'm gonna put type in purchase order tracking. That's the entity that we created last time. And there we go, we've got two, um, two pieces of data from our entity. Now I will say that I did make some slight changes to our entity from last time. So let me let me take a minute and go over that with you here real quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my kind of homepage and kind of come down here to the data and then entities. And then let's open up this purchase order tracking entity. And what I did was on the latitude and longitude, let me just open one of them and made the same change in both of them. Under the advanced options, by default, when you have a float, floating point number. Uh, it's going to put it to two decimal places and latitudes and longitudes have multiple decimal places So I went in and bumped that up to five here did that on both the latitude and longitude 
And the other thing I did here was I added one more piece of data. I think we added this uh, 35 PO number in there. I'm going to add another piece of data, the 20, because I wanted to show the filtering once we added into, into Dynamics 365. Okay, so I just added an extra record there for us. All right, so let's flip back over to the app, and I just want to explain why we show uh, two different records there. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change, I want to get rid of those images. So I'm going to click on, uh, I just want title, subtitle, and body to get rid of those images. And just pick some data for us to put in here. We're going to, we're going to make some changes to that pretty quick here. Uh, but what I want to do is add the other part of that filter here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some code that I wrote earlier. And again, the the video that, that I did a couple weeks ago that I linked earlier will show you exactly what this is doing. So in this items here on the gallery, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste that code in there. And so basically what it's going to do is it's going to take that, um, that FinOps input variable and if it exists, it's going to filter the PO number by that variable, right? So we're going to pass in the FinOps variable with the PO number, and then we're going to try and filter by that actual variable. Okay. So once we get that in here, we're going to go ahead and lay out our columns. I don't like this kind of columns we have here. And really the gallery view is to meant to drill in the data as well. So that's why you get these little arrows on the right hand side here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of those. We're not going to, in this example right now, we're not going to be drilling in anything. So I'm just going to get rid of that to clean that up. And then I've got our PO number here. And then we have our message. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this span across. So I'm going to shorten this PO number here. And then we're going to shorten this one up. This is our message. And the way I'm telling that is I'm looking up top here. See, it says this item is a message. So I'm going to drag the message right there. And in this particular item, this is going to be our latitude. So let me shorten this box up and move this over. So we just have that. There we go. And then we're going to move latitude over here somewhere. We'll adjust that in a minute. And uh, let me slide this up so it, a little bit lower. So I need to add the status, the tracking status. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the item here. We'll do an insert label. And I'm going to add the transportation status right here. Uh, and we're going to change it from PO number. And we should be able to just type in transportation status. And I'll pick it there. It's going to give us our transportation status for our message. And then we have our, this is the latitude. I'm going to go ahead and add another label for our longitude here. So I'm going to slide this over. And we're going to go ahead and put in changes from PO number to longitude. There we go. Now, what I want to do is I want to kind of even these up. And a couple of things, you notice the font's different sizes. So let's, let's fix the font first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this one here to tell. So this is gonna be basically the font that we we're, we're have. It's gonna be Open Sans 20, um, semi-bolded, but I think I like the PO number semi-bolded there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just make sure these are all set to 20. So I'm gonna highlight that, and then I'm gonna make that 20. There we go. And then the other thing I wanna do is, I should mention that what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm control clicking. So I, Click the first one, then I hold my control button down and it'll select all of them there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to align these up, make them look nice. So I'm going to align these to the top. So I'll align the, line them at the top there. And then I'm going to distribute these horizontally. So they're just kind of distributed off there horizontally there. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's shorten this up a little bit more, make that a little bit neater. All right. So then we have our, our data there. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to add a header to describe what these different items are. So I'm going to go hit this plus here, go ahead and hit a rectangle again. I'm going to kind of drag it down on top of that, make it a little bit shorter, and then expand that all the way across. And let's go ahead and insert some labels. So I'm going to need a label here. There we go. And this one's going to be the um, PO number. And I need another label here. And this is going to be the message. And I'll fix the font and the color and everything here in a minute. That's going to be the message. We'll do another label. This is going to be our, our status. Line that up there. And then this one's going to be our 
longitude. Actually, I'm going to flip these around here. I want my longitude to be my latitude to be first. There we go. And so this label is going to be longitude. Nope. Oh, actually created it in my cut that out there. Click back over here. Go to do label. And this is going to be latitude. And this last one is going to be longitude. Okay. So just like before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on all of these. I'm going to click on this. Click on these here and control click just to highlight them all. And I'm going to go back home and I want to align these so they look nice. I'm going to line them across the top. And these I can't distribute horizontally. So, and then the other thing I want to do is I want to change the status of the, the font size and color. So I'm going to have it match. So we'll make that 20. And then the font size, the font color is going to be white. And we have to adjust this out a little bit here. There we go. Perfect. All right. So I've got a little uh, little header there that kind of explains what we're doing here. All right. So I think that looks good for the display of the data. Let's see what it looks like in finance and operations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this one. And we'll go ahead and save. And so what we're going to do is going to go back to our home page. And what I want to do is going to get that app. So I'm going to apps. I need the app ID. So here's our purchase order tracking. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the details on my app. And I just need that app ID. And we're we'll showing a little bit different way of embedding this into Dynamics 365. So if I come back over to Dynamics 365, and what I want to do is I want to go to the purchasing screen. So I'm going to go to uh, modules, purchase order module, excuse me, procurement and sourcing. And then we're going to do all purchase orders. And what I want to do is I want to embed that in the header. Last time I showed you how to embed it up here, but let's just say we want to actually embed it in the screen here. So let's go over here and click on the header. And what I want to do is I want to per personalize this page. And what I can do is I can add a app from Power Apps. So click on Add a Power App, app from Power Apps. And I want to, it wants me to select the section it wants to add it in. I'm going to click in this section down here. And then so I'm going to go purchase order tracking. I'm going to put in my app ID. And then here's where we need to put in our, it, we need it to pass the PO number. So let's type in purchase order, see if we can find the purchase order number. There we go. Wide is fine. I can adjust my uh, legal entity if I want to, but I'm not going to. And we'll go ahead and insert. And so let me close this. And anytime we do a personalization, we have to refresh. Let's go ahead and refresh this screen. And so let's go back to our PO20 and see if this works. Personal 20, we'll go to our header. And here's our PO tracking. And notice it's filtered out our PO20. Okay, so there we have it. We've, we've included the the app inside of Dynamics embedded in, in the screen. So now when I, when I go to the header, I've got the app launching here within the header and filtering down the data within the PO number. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll cut it off here. Next time we're gonna do, we're gonna do some ads and deletes, and uh, so this one I knew was gonna be kind of long because getting the base app established. So I hope you enjoy this video. If, if you're new to Power Apps, hopefully that was helpful. If you've, if you've done Power Apps before, it's probably not as helpful. But uh, please give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, feel free to subscribe. So as I'm putting out more of these videos, you'll, you'll catch the rest of the series. Um, so again, hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, thanks for watching.